Hello, you beautiful viewers out there. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. On today's episode, we're breaking down all the latest news and we're getting into those matchups. The start sits. This is when you're in the trenches making those tough decisions, so don't miss a moment of today's episode. Hey, Foot Clan, you know what my favorite thing is? What? Skittles. <laughs> Actually, I take that back. It's my family. They mean everything to me. Skittles is my second favorite thing. Scratch that, Fucklin. You are my <laughs> second favorite thing. Skittles is my third favorite thing. And as I'm saying this, I realize that football is probably my third. You know what? Skittles is probably like my 68th to 70th favorite thing, but they're my favorite candy. Favorite fruit candy. <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> Podcast the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. It's football time. Kind of, <laughs> kind of. Those are the no. ori original lyrics that you wrote. I'm talking myself into tonight, fellas. I feel it's, like it, it's happening. You, you're talking yourself into it. Are you talking with the teams about what they can produce? It's going to be great. It's going to be a smash sensation Thursday night. You need to get the Zach Taylor plan, the Cincinnati Bengals 4-1 to one pass to rush in neutral game script plan Ooh. over to Tennessee and the Secret Garden tonight so that, that we can have some excitement. I promise you, if, if those two teams with those two quarterbacks implement that plan, yeah. There will be very little excitement. I hope you know that you we, inadvertently complimented Andy Dalton in a huge way right there. I'm, Just in a massive uh, – you're willing to stream Andy Dalton at this point with those ratios. I think if either team could trade for Andy Dalton, they would be upgrading. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, September 19th. Andy, Mike, and Jason back again. Show 778 in our history. And they say the first 777 are the hardest. So from here on out – we should be good. Smooth sailing. About time. We have some news on the show today. We got the fantasy forecast. We'll get into some of the matchups. I think my almost upset is on today's episode. Uh oh. We have starts of the week and Jason's boom boom kicker, which once again I I saw you had like the drafting table out and you were doing a lot of angle related uh, math if protractors I, compasses yeah 100 if i don't have a, a solid right angle tool yes i can't i can't make this work yeah you can't really project the kicker position the way that you have historically so excited about that we'll get to some mailbag if we have time here's the quick question of the day so i was laughing because you're gonna make another math joke Mike. no this was not a math joke this was just a personal anecdote from this morning my son he loves football. He plays football every recess. Okay. This morning he came to me and he said, Dad. Is this your older boy? or your Yeah, okay. this, this is the middle boy. And he said, Dad, we found out that I'm the best kicker Ooh. At, at school. Oh, that's like, good news. I'm like, well, that's awesome. Like, kicking, is, that's great. He's like, no. Because oh. his dream is to go to the NFL. And he says, I don't want to end up as a kicker. Oh, no. <laughs> this, this was not coached. I have not besmirched the name of kickers because I think kickers in football, it's it's great. It's an important job. I just don't like it on my fantasy team, but he's he's already infected with my, Now, with as a father, though, the concussion. Oh, I want him to be a kicker. Okay, got it. Believe it. <laughs> Make that football money without getting beat up. Kicker <laughs> is the best job in the NFL. Well, it is unless you miss. <laughs> Yes, sure. It, it, if you miss, it's I only the do, worst job in the NFL. I only do kickoffs. That's Be it. Look. We are going to need to roster three kickers, <laughs> um, but I'm super good at kickoffs. The thing that's very – yeah, kick kickoffs only. There are those specialists, and that is the best job because nobody returns kicks anymore. You don't even have to try to tackle them. <laughs> if you did the kickoff – and then just broke out into a dance, you would be 100% <laughs> Boom. fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be – now you figured it out because I don't want to be the uh, lonely little kicker in the oh, like locker the, room after a, a team makes that, a, has a great performance and then I shank a 37-yarder. The Adam Sandler song? The yeah. The lonely kicker? Yeah, not good. All right, quick question of the day comes from Twitter today. Is there a strategy to snagging as many startable tight ends in your league as possible to force – trading 
Now, it's uh, my answer is no, not really. But I did see this happen in week one of the fantasy season with specifically TJ Hawkinson. A lot of people picked him up, traded their you know traded their tight end away, or or picked him up to trade TJ Hawkinson. So you know people get desperate about the tight end position. Yeah, they do. And uh, so before the season started with the league of record, I had an empty bench spot, and uh, so it was like let's do a stash here. And I went with Darren, I am the walrus. And that made it hit. But meanwhile, my other tight end was Delaney Walker. Oh, thank you. My other tight end was Delaney Walker, who went bananas yep. week one. And currently, I'm still stuck with Delaney Walker and Darren Waller. Because even though Delaney Walker is, he's a weekly start at the tight end position. And like to me, a good one. He's not elite. But he is a good play. But no one's trading. No up. one wants to trade for Delaney Walker. Now right. I, I have Andrews and Waller in our listener league, so that combination I could get a trade value. But I'm not out get, there yes. on the waiver wire trying to pick more tight ends no. up to trade them as though they are some amazing currency. No, the, o- the only reason I'm picking an extra, like if I've got a decent tight end and I'm going to choose to pick up a tight end off of waivers, is not to trade. The only situation I could see that happening is like let's say. My opponent had David Njoku. Well, well then, blocking. sure. I'll grab a tight end and drop You know, someone that maybe I'd rather roster a little bit. But if I can keep my opponent from having a, a startable tight end, great. That's the problem with my team right now is uh, Waller and Walker, weakly usable tight ends. I don't – like, I should drop one. Because, you don't want the league to have But I don't one? want someone to just grab Walker. Mike, just drop Waller. It's- Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> just, just do it. Yeah, we've been begging. Find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. If you support the show at jointhefoot.com, you get access to a bunch of perks and extra episode every week. You also get access to our consistency charts. Ooh, and those, new. those are getting built out right now for this season. So what that is is a, a really neat visual model. You get to see how each player finished at the position over the duration of the season to determine the most consistent players at each position. We have the historical data on this, so we can look backwards at preceding years. And we are building out the 2019 week by week right now. That should be up very soon. You also get flex rankings, premium projections every week, and some proprietary, you know, stats and information for supporting the show. So I encourage everybody to check that out at jointhefoot.com. If you want just a little extra leg up on the competition, Mm -hmm. Uh, You can check that out. So, without further ado, we've got news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, update here. We are officially playing Juju Smith-Schuster this week in the Sleeper Bowl. Let's go. We, We knew this day would come. Not only are we playing against Juju, but we are currently playing Juju against Ooh. Juju. Which I think is the plot of whatever that like Will Smith movie coming out is. Yes. Where although we don't have the young version. Oh, he's already a young version of Juju. But have you seen the trailer yeah, for that Will uh, Smith movie? Gemini Man? Yeah, where he's got like the young version they of it. They put him on the face app. Yeah, they basically <laughs> did. But that that's trippy, right? Now so, Juju is, versus Juju here is what we're saying. Is this like something where we should Warn the Foot Clan, warn fantasy football players that Juju's going to try to have a poor game this week. <laughs> like he's telling the coaches, it's James Washington. Let me get him open. Let me go to give a good pick. I'll I don't, do everything to get everyone else involved. I'm all for flattering ourselves. We do it often, but I'm not sure that him beating us in this league is quite the priority that mm. that his professional career is. But maybe. He better check himself. He's got challenges ahead of him regardless. You've got a brand new quarterback to build a rapport with. So we'll see. You know, he doesn't have the advantage of James Washington having gone to college and being BFFs with Mason Rudolph. All right. Multiple sources confirming that Brown's tight end David Njoku doesn't just have a concussion, guys. He actually suffered a broken wrist. Ooh. He is seeking a second opinion to find out if he needs surgery, which means the first opinion suggests that he needed surgery. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, you know, David Njoku is not going to be an option for your team from this point the, the, forward. 
the getting a second opinion is so wild. I mean, I get that like doctors have their different opinions, but it's like I go to the doctor. You know, it's one of the most trusted professions in all of the world. Like, okay, this person, they, they've studied their butt off. They worked very, very hard to be in a position. They say, sir, you have a broken wrist. I disagree. <laughs> I would like to speak to someone else. May I speak to your manager, please? And you know when you don't see that? It's like, your wrist is going to be fine. <laughs> well, hold on a minute. I'm going to need to I'm gonna need to confirm this with another doctor. The, the irony is that I've literally been in that position with my wrist before and had the doctor be wrong. Really? Yes. First time or second time? The first doctor was wrong. Now, did he say it was broken or fine? They said it was broken. Oh, wow. So, this was in our flag football league. I threw an interception for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, doing, doing well. Sorry. Uh, threw an interception. Then I had to play the defensive position. I got truck stick by a lineman. I thought I broke my wrist. I went to the urgent care. They confirmed on x-ray that I broke my wrist, recommended I go to an orthopedic person who x-rayed me and told me I did not break my wrist. It was a severe sprain. So. Okay. Okay. Proven wrong. I uh, Just saying. And Joe, also, and Joe Goose, fine. He'll be out there. Now, no, not really. that, all that being said for fantasy, I had said yesterday on the footcast, we, we had almost a big disagreement. I said, there's no way you drop David and Joku right now because he could be back from concussion this week, or if not, he's probably back next week. At this point, he's going to miss several weeks, and I would not. It's just like Hunter Henry. Based I on a wanted, second opinion, let's sure maybe wait a day or or, or a couple hours. But um, you know, I I want Hunter Henry. I want David Njoku, but I I'm not going to roster those guys for a month plus, uh, just holding hostage a bench spot. All right, Jets quarterback Sam Darnold has full confidence he'll be ready for the Week 5 matchup against the Eagles, which means he's basically just missing one more game this week, sure. which I'd try to miss that game too. So a 22-and-a-half <laughs> point line against the Patriots. This, this was a long con by Darnold. He's like, I will get mono got to avoid those that secondary. <laughs> I would Sorry, do it. Coach, I can't play. Why? Uh, I heard stuff. I've got – Mono? Mono. That's not the first thing that comes to his mind. Uh, yeah, well, he's going to miss this yeah. one. They'll have the bye week, and then it'll be the Eagles. So we'll see if he's back out there. It would be great news for two players. Yeah. In particular, Robbie Anderson, Robbie. Chris Herndon, who will be returning for week five after the suspension. And ultimately, great news for Lev Bell and potentially Jamison Crowder. Well, well Herndon will be back. He's a four-game suspension, right? Yeah, but the, oh, that won't bye qualify as up. a that won't qualify yeah. as one of the the suspended games. So week six. Yes. M my apologies. All right, Cam Newton. He's not practicing again today, Thursday. He is not going to be out there this week. Now I had heard some things. I know, Mike, you repeatedly screamed the word liars out loud. I believe it was a type of liar, though. It was a. A big fat liar. You, I'm glad you clarified. Otherwise, we'd be confused. You called them big fat liars. There is, I, I did hear some reports that the team legitimately didn't know that the foot was bothering him until after the game and that he had just kind of not told them that it was a problem and that they just, because the report came out that they just discovered no. this. So I'm just throwing a little bit of water on the liar liar pants on fire that, segment well let me let me help back mike up here because i had no inside information that the foot was <laughs> clinically still hurting him but i was i was pretty confident from my eyeballs that clearly the foot was a problem and well, when they were asked is the foot a problem absolutely not no, field yates said this though before the re-injury play that's been identified in the game he was seven for eight that's how he started the game seven for eight after that it was something like 12 for 30 so it's possible that he aggravated in the game and then his coach defended him afterwards. And I'm just trying to make a peaceful sure. world, Mike. You said keep it beautiful the other day. I, yeah, that's true. I'm trying. Thank you. Steve, uh, Sterling Shepard. Steve Shepard. Steve, Steve Shepard. <laughs> Actually, it just reminded me of uh, Scott Sterling. Oh! <laughs> if you haven't YouTube the old <laughs> the Scott. The man. The myth. The legend. Scott <laughs> Sterling. Sterling. Yeah, just look it up. Uh, Sterling Shepard, though, is expected to clear the protocol. He should be back out there Thursday. And then this is interesting news to monitor. 
Marlon Mack, Colts running back, he didn't practice on Wednesday. He left the he left Tennessee with a uh, calf that was heavily wrapped. We're going to talk about him later. We'll talk about him in the matchup. This is a very, very difficult situation because of how well the Colts are running the football. In week one, obviously, Marlon Mack was like the offensive player of the week, 174 Something rushing like yardage, that, yeah. rushing yards. Last week, he was banged up, but they ran for 160-something on the ground. So this team is running the ball well, and that's leading this new Jacoby Brissett offense. So Jordan Wilkins. Yeah, Jordan Wilkins had a big week last week, and he would be the one to – Absorb the car early down carries. Yes, yeah, so if Marlon Mack is gone, it would be Jordan Wilkins as the as the. They're not putting Naeem Hines out there as like the give you twenty no. carries type of player. And if we know anything about calf injuries for the Colts, Marlon Mack will retire soon. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no! Yes, that's oh. right. I did it. Take that, Andrew Luck. <laughs> if you wonder how Jordan Wilkins did on limited carries, he was a cool sixteen point four a carry on five carries. Last this week, five for 82 and a touchdown. So that line treating the running backs well. That being said, this is one of those situations where if Max active, you have to start him. Like, I love him this week. And if he's out wow. there, I'm just taking the shot at Are him. Are you? Yeah, it's because if he's going to be back out there, I'm not falling for the Deshaun Jackson splint treatment again. I The, 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 set, the setup is so good for Marlon Mack that I don't want to leave that on my bench. The, me personally, I just sure. don't want that risk. It's, because it's, the matchup is so good, and I just love it. It's a bit different to me than than a splint where he can run. Like, if it's your calf, the the risk of a re aggravation on like your first carry, it's it's there. That, that that's my only concern with it, with Marlon you're, Mack. You're not wrong that it's possible to re aggravate the injury, but I have to trust the team saying if you're gonna make him active when you have an option like Wilkins, you believe he won't re aggravate it. They're not gonna put him out there with their belief that it'll happen. So, uh, you know. We'll see what happens. We've got in or out tomorrow on the show. That is our weekly injury segment heading into the weekend. You can also get game day alerts. That's another one of the perks of jointhefoot.com and being a member of our listener community. And we'll have Sunday Live one hour before kickoff. Mike will be back on the IG and the YouTube. Oh, and, and the Facebook. Yeah. I'll be everywhere. Periscopes. That's and, right. Now, I did post the video of Jason... And the trade reaction, the hidden cam video of Jason finding out that he did not receive Patrick Mahomes, but rather I did. That's on YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. It's an invasion Have of you, my privacy. It was a <laughs> massive uh, invasion for it the was. sake of content. And it was great content. Yeah. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. We want to thank them for supporting the show. Make sure you download that app today. Before we get into the forecast, I want to thank today's sponsor, Muggsy Jeans. Getting a good pair of jeans is like a it's like a cool 90-yard oh, touchdown. Oh, that's run. the OBJ touchdown. Ex well, he was a reception. I guess it was 89. But you know what? It was 89-yard touchdown. It was still a touchdown. Getting Mike. a good pair of jeans is like an 89-yard touchdown right, reception. And Muggsy Jeans are the most comfortable jeans ever made. No exaggeration, Muggsy. They are real jeans, and they are literally as comfortable as as sweatpants like that's a problem with jeans you're like oh this jeans this pair of jeans i look i look good in these but i'm really uncomfortable i cannot move in these jeans you ever see that seinfeld with kramer in the stiff jeans exactly. where he can't bend his knees exactly you don't want to be that guy no and, and the magic is in mugsy's proprietary fabrics which include a blend of high-tech materials that make these jeans mind-blowingly soft and flexible if you are not wearing flexible stretchy jeans you are doing life incorrectly. They're great. Andy has completely re his. Never going back. I love them. This is exactly. And the guys at Muggsy are so confident you'll love them. They offer free USA shipping and returns, so your comfort is 100% guaranteed. Do your legs a favor. Grab your own pair of the jeans that are sweeping the nation by heading to Muggsy.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y dot com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS for 10 bucks off. And a reminder, hiring can be a slow process. You know that out there. Calf, uh, Cafe Altura's COO, Dylan Miskowitz, needed to hire a director of coffee for his organic coffee company. Mm. But he was having trouble finding a qualified applicant. This is a problem for yes. a lot of companies. Yes. So he switched to ZipRecruiter. 
ZipRecruiter does not depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its technology identifies people with the right experience and invites them to apply for your job. So you get qualified candidates and you get them fast. Dylan posted his job on ZipRecruiter and said he was impressed by good, how... Good work, Dylan. Yeah, how quickly he had candidates apply, high-quality candidates. He also used their candidate rating feature to filter the applicants so he could focus... Oh, Dylan crushing it. Dylan is killing. Oh, I see, see what you did. See why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free at their web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. Mm. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. Fantasy Forecast. All right. This is your weekly reminder. Take your Thursday night players. If you're playing a Thursday night Titan or Jag, take them out of the – So your running backs. Make sure – Flex yeah. position. Make sure the running backs are in, in the proper position. I feel like this is the first week ever where – we don't need to say it. Like, Derrick Henry <laughs> has already been in your running back slot. You know what I mean? Well, probably. Like Leonard Fournette's probably in your running back slot already. Well, sometimes may, people sometimes play. Sometimes teams are real good. No, people play the game of bench your entire team, make your opponent tilt because it works, and people freak out when they see you have no players in. And then, and then when you're scrambling to get them all back in, maybe you make a mistake. Yeah. We don't want you to make that mistake. I thought you were going to say people play the game where they just put certain players in their starting position as a way to imbue confidence. Like, like maybe Ooh, I have that's a good one. Too. Maybe I put David Opportunity up in my RB two spot and Derrick Henry down in my flex <laughs> to encourage David Montgomery to have a big game. I've literally doing that right now. You doing in, that right? in our league? Well, in our league of record, yeah. like in the wide receiver, you're ones, like, come on, guys. Well, one wide receiver, one and two. I've got Sammy Watkins and John Ross there. Meanwhile, my flex is the lowly Devontae Adams. I just want people to see. So you're literally now, the perfect wait, example. But are you <laughs> are you trying to prop up Watkins and Ross, or are you sending yes. a message to Devontae Adams? Ooh. Is this like a, hey, Adams, you're in the flex right now, bro. It's a, it's a twofer because in our league scoring, Watkins and John Ross are the number one and number two scorers at the position. So I'm just giving them sure. the respect that they deserve. Can I ask Al Borland a question? I don't know if you can. Can you speak, Al? You can't. No. He's shaking his head. He can't speak. Um, is, is this fantasy forecast graphic that we see on the YouTube channel, is that new? <laughs> I feel like I'm in Sesame Street right now. We've it's got like the rain cloud and the sun. Did you get this at clipart.net? <laughs> I mean, what is this? This is the sunniest sun and the cloudiest cloud. I love it. For the fantasy. For uh, Has that been up there for weeks? Yeah. Oh, my god. Actually, gosh. he drew those, and now he's very insulted. <laughs> I'm going to bring my, my five-year-old in here. We're going to give him the <laughs> get an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that, I was going to say teach him about the weather <laughs> with these graphics. So, yeah, you can see that on YouTube. V very good work. Very good way. That must have taken you a, a whole seconds <laughs> over lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Broncos at zero and two take on the Packers. They're two and zero. They're seven and a half point home favorites at Lambeau. And you know, on paper here, it looks like the Packers should be all right in this matchup. We haven't seen enough from the Broncos' offense or defense to make me think they're going to stay competitive in this one. The over unders forty three. That gives an implied point total for the Packers of 25 for the Broncos. It's 17. We have been asked the question, what does that mean? What is the implied point total? And that's simply looking at the game line, looking at uh, the total points expected, and then extrapolating what Vegas says each team is going to put up points-wise. And that makes a big difference because, look, Vegas isn't in the business of losing a lot of money. They don't get everything right, certainly not, but they get it right more than they get it wrong and so you can you could kind of extrapolate fantasy points. If the Packers are going to score around 25 and the Broncos are going to score around 17 points, there's you know a touchdown discrepancy there that that goes to the Packers side. Now we've seen uh, Joe Flacco over you know his first two weeks for Denver. He's been fine for a player named Emmanuel Sanders, but yes. outside of Emmanuel Sanders on the offensive side of the ball for the Broncos, you cannot have a lot of confidence, especially with the way. The Packers' defense is playing. Now, the, the Packers' D, they're number one against tight ends right now. They're number three against quarterbacks, number six against wide receivers. They have given up points to the running back position. But I think that is a bit of a distortion because it's really a 75-yard touchdown run to Dalvin Cook that's distorting that fantasy total. So this has been a very good defense. They're at home. Do you have any confidence in playing 
Philip Lindsay, Royce Freeman in this matchup? No, I I do not have confidence in playing either of them, but I am very in, interested because Royce Freeman outplayed Philip Lindsay, and Royce Freeman received more opportunity in the passing game, and that seems counterintuitive if you don't know the history of Royce Freeman. You just saw what Lindsay did last year. You're like, oh, he will. He f- looks like the profile of a player who would be great uh, in the passing game. But Royce Freeman is was drafted to be a three down running back. Philip Lindsay just uh, happened to smash that a little bit last year. So I'm I'm not playing either of them, but I'm very interested to watch and see if the workload starts to shift Royce Freeman's way. Now, would you play Miles Sanders, who has not been a fantasy darling in any way, right. over these two players? Wow. Miles um, Sanders has Detroit this week, and then, you know, obviously Royce and Lindsey, you don't know who's going to get more work. I, I would rather play the – I mean, all of these running backs are splitting carries. I would rather play the running back on the better offense, yeah. who's favored, who's at home. This is. They also don't have D-Jax and Alshon. That's so. what I was going to say. The, the injuries factor in. Uh, it's it's going narrative, but perhaps they try and give Miles Sanders a bit more work this week. All right. Now on the Packers side, Aaron Rodgers must start quarterback. You you have to play him here at home. Last week, hot start, and then I, I basically uh, I came on our Slack channel. I was like, this is exactly what I expected him to do. I don't think he scored another fantasy point from the time that I posted that. <laughs> but... You know, week one, 203 and one. Week two, 209 and two. The yardage numbers aren't there for Aaron Rodgers right now. Do you expect improvement in this game or more of the same? I love Aaron Rodgers this week. All right. So much that we are featuring him in a later segment. Ooh, I wonder what that segment is. You'll see. (laughs) Uh, Aaron (laughs) Jones had a big week last week. He's our consensus RB9. There were now what I I'm not familiar with this quote. Oh yeah, so I'll, Will you I'll let take me know it from, what Matt Lafleur. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I'll this take is it your, from here. So, your department. So Matt Lafleur saw what Aaron Jones could do with with a full featured workload, and he's like, "Whoa, that's too good. I need to get Jamal Williams more involved. I want to even up the the carry count." And to that, we say, Lafleur, cram it up your cram hole. Oh, that's our comment to him. Yes. Oh, so you're rebelling in a very adolescent fashion against yes. Matt Lafleur. Yes. I buy the comments though, and that's the con- that's the that's problem. the concern. That's yeah. the problem. Aaron Jones very good last week. Had the touchdown. Very good running back. Much better running back than Jamal Williams. So what do we do here? What you, obviously you our Aaron expectation Jones. is yes. Aaron Jones is out there. You play Aaron Jones and you bench Jamal Williams. Uh, you know, e- even if he says he wants it to be more even, I mean, he was the one in charge last week. He gave Aaron Jones all the run in the world. They won. He played great. So yeah, maybe Jamal Williams gets a few more carries. Maybe he doesn't, and this is just coach speak trying to say, "Hey, Jamal, I still love you too." Come on, bro, buddy, buddy, pick it up. Um, but no, you a- Aaron Jones is a good play here. Jamal Williams is. He's a good play if you're in like a 62 team league. Okay, yeah, that's good advice. Devonte Adams, he's out there. Emmanuel Sanders, he's a must start at this yes, point. Yes, he is. Great report and one of the better fantasy wide receivers thus far through two weeks. Yep, his recovery is nothing short of sensational. And just remember, if you're like, "Wow, it's Joe Flacco, Manny Sanders," can it really continue? Look what Manny Sanders was doing last year before the injury with garbage at the quarterback position, like. Manny Sanders is a he's a must start for he's me. He's the now. wide receiver four right now, and on a team with a struggling offense, incredibly leads all wide receivers in red zone targets with seven. Yes. So when they're down there, there is one player that Joe Flacco has confidence in, and his name is Emmanuel Sanders. MVS, Geronimo Allison, would you play either this week in the plus matchup? I think that you can, and uh, with you guys, I would play MVS in this one just seeing the way that – Geronimo has been being utilized. This isn't this, the normal slot wide receiver routes that we're used to seeing with uh, the old McCarthy regime where Randall Cobb would at least not just stand on the line of scrimmage, but those are the targets that Geronimo is getting, so I would pivot to Marquez. All right, the Falcons take on the Colts in Indianapolis. The Colts are one-and-a-half-point home favorites in this one, both teams one-and-one, and, one, and the over is at 47, so – I think we're expecting some fireworks in this game, some offensive production for your fantasy team. Matt Ryan leading the league in interceptions. Don't care. Doesn't really matter. Three twenty and uh, three touchdowns. Is that uh, on last week? Is that what last week was? With three picks, Brooks. Yep. 
Got no context there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll go check that. Uh, yes, it was it last last week. That was last week, right? Yes, well, he was three and three. He has surpassed three hundred passing yards, yards, yards each of the two weeks. Uh, Matt Ryan's a must start. Jacoby Brissett on the other side. Whoa, what? Hold no, on. No, no, no. That, that's that's fine. He, Matt Ryan is a must start. Okay. The, the, I, I I do think that he's. Uh, I, but this is this is I still think a really good defense. This is the first time that they're at home as well. They started the year on the road. I, like I I paid to pick the Colts up to play against the Falcons, even though you don't usually want to play against Falcons for fantasy defenses. You get points for turnovers and sacks primarily. And Matt Ryan is handing out turnovers and sacks. The Colts are good defense at home. So it, I had a hesitation, but still, he's he's a top 10 quarterback. Okay. Marlon Mack, we talked about it earlier. We don't know what his status is right now. If he's playing, I'm playing him. That's the way I'm going to do it. He is the RB7 in half point scoring through two weeks. He had a monster week one, as we said. You can flex... Jordan Wilkins, if Mac, if Mac is out, Wilkins will be one of the better midweek waiver wire pickups. And at this point, you know, I don't know what the best prescription would be, but I would say look at today, Thursday's practice reports. Brooks, make sure you buzz in if we hear anything. But if Mac is out, I think you can play Jordan Wilkins with confidence. I, As long as it's flex confidence, I agree with that. I don't know if I would go as far as RB2, but he, he becomes a start. Devonta Freeman, it's not been good. Eight for nineteen, eleven for twenty-two. It's not been good, but this is this is a matchup that that Devonta Freeman should be able to break out of the slump. If Freeman has another very poor game against this matchup, then that's I mean that, that's I think time to jump ship. But the first couple matchups for for Freeman have they've not been plus matchups. For the running back position. I don't know that this is a very plus matchup. I realize that the first two weeks they've been torched, but Derrick Thir Henry. 30.8 fantasy points per game through the first two weeks. Now, who'd they play? So it was Derrick Henry and uh, the Tennessee Titans, who obviously they're that's their whole offense. And then it was the Chargers with Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson torching. So I'm, I'm not saying that they, but we, we saw them last year as a good defense. There's no reason to think that they are all of a sudden one of the worst defenses. So this should be a middle-of-the-road matchup, not just a super-plus matchup. That's how I see it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, though, with Mike's sentiment that if, if Devonta Freeman doesn't show up in this game, you got three weeks of it, and this should be a matchup he can – if he can't produce here, yeah. when are you going to start him exactly. at any point in time? So this is make-or-break time for Devonta Freeman. He's only had one opportunity in the red zone all year – so we'll see what happens. Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, they're yep. in there. T.Y. Hilton, yep, absolutely. The wide receiver seven through two weeks. So it's going to be smooth sailing for T.Y. Hilton again this week. Eric Ebron, Austin Hooper. At this point in time, you can really look at Austin Hooper. And I look, I hate to say this because they feel so different. But I don't know that there's a massive difference between what Austin Hooper is providing you and Darren Waller. I knew that was the you name knew, you were going to say. See, you knew it, right? Because, because they're very getting, similar in this situation. If you're getting targets, if you're getting you know, five-plus targets, five to ten targets a game at tight end, you're, you're up there. You're, you're doing you're, your job. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to have decent fantasy production in PPR leagues. and Yeah, so Austin Hooper is someone that you can pick up and play in the Barfy landscape. Nine targets week one, six targets through two weeks to speak to Jason's point. I mean, in this game, who would you rather start? I would uh, rather start Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper, Hooper or Absolutely. Eric Ebron. Yeah, Eric Ebron's in the roulette of tight yeah. end role, and we didn't even talk about Jimmy Graham. Maybe that was on purpose in the previous game. But Jimmy Graham and, uh, and Eric Ebron, just They're, pick your favorite to either goose you or score a touchdown. That's the yeah. way it feels. Oh, getting goosed by a tight end. <laughs> yeah. Not good. <laughs> Not good. So – uh, we'll see what happens in this one. Monitor Marlon Mack situation. That's that's the big headline. Ravens. Oh, yes. Chiefs. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's go. Just a 52.5 point over under. That seems low. Slant, you want the over in that one? Yes. We did see. Now, Lamar Jackson has been nothing short of spectacular through two weeks. Patrick Mahomes has been Patrick Mahomes. Yep. That being said, if you watch the film on Lamar Jackson last week, he finally had a handful of those, you know, severe overthrows, 
mistakes throwing the football. Had a bunch of great throws as well. But you finally saw him start to make a few mistakes through the air, but he made up for it with a monstrous game on the ground, his career high. Who are you not starting in this matchup? Because on the Chiefs' side, we'll circle back to the running backs, but let's stay at the wide receiver position. Watkins, Robinson, Hardman. Are you fine with all three? Yes. Yes. Marquise Brown? Yes. The only wide receiver to start there? Yep. The only one. And... uh, he was actually in on what sixty five percent of snaps last week. Yeah, and his his target share was is actually pretty nice. I mean, thirteen targets the, this past week, and Lamar Jackson threw the ball you know thirty seven times. But that for where for what they are doing, like Marquise Brown is is getting a very nice target share so far. All right, Mark Andrews, a must start at tight end. Travis Kelsey, a must start at tight end. Let's go to the running backs. Mark Ingram, you're going to play him. You're not going to play anybody else. Red zone rushes this year. Mark Ingram has seven, but Gus Bus has actually received eight. Are you worried at all about red zone work for Ingram? Mm. I I said this from before the offseason. I think Gus Edwards is a problem for Mark Ingram in general on the season. These first three weeks for Baltimore have been so great for fantasy. I'm not hesitant in the slightest on Mark Ingram, but as time goes on, yeah, I think I think when the games are more Baltimore scoring what you're used to, which is the lower scoring defensive uh games, then then yeah, you you'll you'll be missing out on the, some of that red zone work. Some of it, but the numbers are skewed because Gus Edwards carried the ball seventeen times when they blew out Miami fifty nine to ten. In a closer game that was competitive the whole entire time, Gus Edwards carried the ball three times. Yeah, I think that that's a good point. Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy. Oy. Do we have any practice report updates, Brooks, on bo- either of those McCoy, players? The one from yesterday was McCoy was supposed to practice, but he did not. So, that's the latest I've seen. So both Damian and LaShawn are not practicing. So, as of this. yeah, I mean. One Survival of, of the fittest in that backfield, you know. Oh, very man. nice. Very you, nice. Very uh, Darwinian thoughts that you had there. Darwin Thompson, <laughs> pick him up. If, yes. Look, if if both of these guys are out, holy crap, yes. Yeah, you I mean, play Darwin Thompson. If Daryl Williams will play too in that. Yeah, situ- it's not going to be the entire Darwin show, but the, like you could have a top five running back. You could, and uh, but how do you feel? Let's say who do you stash today? Jordan Wilkins or Darwin Thompson? If you're going to the waiver, Darwin. Way. Okay, Darwin for me because I'm going for the upside. But so let's break this down for Darwin. Damian plays. He is the he is fantastic in passing work, but McCoy doesn't play. How excited are you for Darwin then? I'm actually not that excited in that situation. Okay, but if Shady plays and Damian is out, more excited. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's where I lean as well. I just wanted to see where you your temperature. Yeah, was. If, if Damian was completely out and with McCoy dealing with what seems to be an injury that's you know it could linger a little bit, the workload might not be massive for him so i'd be more interested in, in darwin at that point this game's gonna be fun yes very excited for it should be fun you know the, the one thing is that the ravens defensively have been what the ravens defensively often are and they've been stalwarts especially against the running back position so sunday night football is so mad they can't flex games right now i was gonna say this this game just feels like i should not see a 1 p.m eastern start time no but at least we get the redskins Bears on Monday night. Oh yeah. Why did and at least we get this the, show has been going so well. At Why did we, we have get to Jacksonville, bring that up? Tennessee tonight? <laughs> oh come on! I'm trying to be positive. Keep things total beautiful. Points. Keep to- <laughs> Thank you. So get this total points. You take the Thursday night game and the Monday night game. You add those games together. Do you take that total Ooh. or do you take the total of <laughs> the Chiefs Ravens game? That someone's got to make a prop bet on that. I'm taking Chiefs Ravens. Fair. All right, the Bengals travel to take on the Bills. You know, I'm not sure that four to one neutral game script recipe is working for the Bengals, but their defense isn't working either, and they're being pushed into that. Bills are two and zero. I'm surprised at this game line. At thought home, it would be closer. I did. I thought it would be closer. The Bills are six point home favorites against Cincinnati here. The game's a 44-point over-under. No! I'm tempted to... Andy's almost upset of the week. 
Well, you guys were giving Andy Dalton so much love earlier in the show by extension <laughs> yeah. of your comments that I might as well saying get we in like on. him I more just, than Gardner? I really do think the Bills win this game. I think it just goes down to the wire. You're going to have mistakes from both sides of the football. The Bills have a, a, a great defense, but we have seen the Bengals move the ball. And, you know, in week one, I think that's the template I'm looking at. In week one, it was a nail-biter between the Bengals and the, the Seahawks, right? And that was in Seattle, and that went down to the wire. So, you know, that's the template I'm seeing here. I think a game's closer than a six-point line. It's, it's fair, but the Bills are going to win. Okay. Well, that's something that has rarely been said with such conviction over the last The Bills are – the, their defense is fantastic, and the offense is good enough now. Well, I certainly love Josh Allen this week. He's yes. got a great opportunity against the Bengals defense that is 23rd in the league against fantasy quarterbacks, 32nd in the league against fantasy running backs. And, yes, I'm quoting both for Josh Allen because he likes to run the football. You must start Josh Allen in this game. Agreed. He's a great option. Andy Dalton on the road here, not a stream-worthy candidate. They can't run the football right now. We mentioned Joe Mixon is at, what, 1.59 yards per carry on the year so far. Still got a bum ankle. Seems difficult that this is going to change on the road against Buffalo. I, I I do think it could change on the road against Buffalo. Not not that it's going to be a great game, but we have to remember. I, I think people who have personally had Joe Mixon, they've been going through that experience. It's been a rough one. He's been terrible. He's There's been, been support injured. groups. Yes, but – you know, it's one of those things where there's been – this is a new offense, a new offensive system being installed. So many of his good runs have been called back on penalty. He's been injured. Now another week to get healthy. He is still a great back, and I think he's a startable asset, and a lot of people won't touch him right now. I, I have confidence to say, look, he's not – this isn't his best matchup. He's not going to be a, a top ten back this week, but if I had him, I would be starting him. You are the highest on Mixon this week. You've got him at 19 on your ranking. So, like you said, not not an RB1, but a player you're fine starting. On the other side, Frank Gore. This, this is happening. Oh, it's yeah. It's happening. And this, is, look, this is all on the health of Devin Singletary. To me, uh, the hamstring, if you missed what had happened, Devin Singletary had a run to the outside. He pulled up lame with the – and had to do the one-legged scoot out of bounds because the hamstring is a problem. We don't have an official word yet that Devin Singletary is going to miss. It just appears to be trending that way. And Frank Gore got a bunch of work. I mean, efficiency be darned. It doesn't matter because I'm picking the Bills to win this game, and I think that Frank Gore is going to see a lot of work. Yeah, it's a shame that Singletary got banged up. We were starting to see him emerge yes. as a big play type of guy. He actually leads the NFL with five 15-plus yard runs on only 10 attempts. So he, he was uh, showing the fantasy football community what he had, and, and now, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait a little while, most likely. You're not going to see those runs from Gore. No, he has zero of them on 30 attempts. Not shocking. Yeah. Does he just go down at about the 14-yard mark if necessary to if preserve necessary, that? If necessary, he will. There's there's a certain style of running you have to do to be infinite, to be all. It. I'm picturing the mental picture of like a robot running out of battery, like at the 14. <laughs> and <laughs> See, I picture him more of like he is actually a superhero in real life, but he has to do the thing where he, he – you got to pull the punches, or right. you'll be exposed. He should pull just a few, few fewer. Let, yeah, a few fewer. <laughs> yeah, John Brown. Would you start him? Yes. yes. All right. He's got a twenty-seven percent target share right now and a hundred and forty-four target pace. That's in, incredible. So John Brown. We'll, yeah, we'll see. He he's you know he started hot last year. We saw that, and then you know didn't. But there was a quarterback changeover. So yeah. Tyler Boyd. Yep. John Ross. I am playing him uh, in three wide receiver uh, leagues and or as a as a flex in unless I have like a, a fantastic option. But this is this is the 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 big test for John Ross. I know he scored most of his points last week on the garbage time touchdown. So we'll see does he get the targets that he received in in week one. But he's got a really really tough matchup here. He should see a lot of Tre'Davious White. So this is a big test for John Ross to see if he is actually living up to that first-round draft I would uh, I would prefer price. to not start 
John Ross this week. I get it. The stat line last week, you just brought it up. It was very inflated by a super late garbage time score. Um, th this is one of those things where John Ross is not going to just be great every week of the season. Agreed. There's going to be plenty of bad weeks. Is this Buffalo's this home, is probably home opener? I believe it is Buffalo's home opener. I wanted to vet that, but I th they, they started, I think, Jets – uh, on the road, and okay. yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's their home opener. Yeah, it'll be an interesting game. I mean, we if they win this game, and if the Patriots somehow knock off the Jets, <laughs> you'll have a three and zero, three and zero head to head matchup next week Buffalo. with a line that's over fifteen points. <laughs> You think that the Patriots no. line over the Bills will be no. fifteen? No, it'll be that over. Will not happen. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say right now. I think their line will be twelve. Is the game in New England? Remind me of where the game is. The I mean, game that matters. Is, the game is in Buffalo. Oh. There's zero percent chance it's a twelve point 10. line. Ten. Oh, so you're lower in it? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still Hopefully. be double digits. I will predict if, if both teams are three and zero. If they're both three and zero, I think the line will be seven points. So. I lean closer to seven. Yes. I mean, a, a road seven point favorite. That's. Of against an undefeated team? Against an undefeated yeah. team. That's pretty bold. All right. Let's get to this one. The Jets at 0-2 take on the Patriots. Now, the incredible – we talked about the implied point totals. The Patriots are 2-0. The game has a 43.5 point over under. You're like, oh, that's kind of low. Well, the implied point total, because the line is 23, have the Patriots scoring 33 points and the Jets scoring 11. The Jets. I don't know how they score 11 points. That was my thing with Miami the week prior. Is it prior. Love Bell? Love Bell can get you to 11? I don't think it's possible. Love Bell will get you 11 fantasy points. But, yeah. it, I mean, I they, they're they going to have to get so lucky to score 11 points. Let's simplify this. Love Bell, the only player you can play on the entire Jets team? Agreed. And you should play him. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the carry count, the touches, the help he is to a young quarterback around the line of scrimmage, he will catch probably 10 passes again. Yeah. Yeah, and the... The fantastic thing about Le'Veon Bell, it, like in PPR, he's so valuable right now. Le'Veon Bell, through the season, has negative air yards. Right. Negative 21 air yards and, and is, is a dominant PPR running back right now. If I want to go for the NFL record in completion percentage, I would line Lev Bell up about six, seven yards behind the line of scrimmage, <laughs> snap it, and throw it to him. Uh, on the other side, you have Sonny Michelle, James White, Rex Burkhead, Michelle, we have as our consensus RB16 on the week. I think Jason dug this up. Somebody did. On uh, – what is this? Zero force missed tackles on the yeah. year for Sonny Michelle? Yep. According to Pro Football Focus, he has not forced a missed tackle yet. I don't care. I don't care either. In this matchup, when you're expected to score 33 points at home in a game that you're expected to win by 23 points, you're going to get yes. goal line opportunities. Were you happy with Sonny Michelle last week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he he was one micro mil, mil, micro millimeter. That's a new. I'm gonna double it's up. Way smaller than a. I mean, if it doesn't say micro millimeter, it's not the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> he had a second touchdown that they actually the the Patriots flagged to try to review and get it, and it was overturned. But he basically had a second opportunity to get in the end zone. Two touchdowns is well within the realm of possibilities here in this game. Yeah. And so the the other question, you know, Antonio Brown's supposed to be out there. We didn't see a lot from Edelman and Gordon with Antonio Brown out there, and I think he'll get fed. He's definitely the one wide receiver I have the most confidence in in this game, you know, with all three of them out there. Yeah, yeah. I would play Brown I just with, with what they showed last week where Antonio Brown was still limited in his snaps, but Tom Brady force-fed him the ball, and Antonio Brown is always open. So, yes, I'm playing Brown. Scared um, of scared of Edelman? Scared of Gordon? No, I will still play Edelman. I am scared to start Josh Gordon, though. Me I, too. I am less scared than you two gentlemen. He was still on the field a lot. It only takes one play. I mean, it, it's one of those I, – I think Josh Gordon is going to have those weeks where you're disappointed and those weeks where they're monstrous and he helps you a lot. You, you're not going to just be able to tell because it's a, a good defense or a bad defense. And so, in the, like, for instance, we talked about John Ross. I would much rather play Gordon over John Ross. Mm. Wow. I yeah, that, think that's a very bold uh, statement there. The sir. argument for Josh, uh, like why I'm lower on Josh Gordon when you're saying, yeah, he's out there running around, 
We, we see that all the time from Patriots wide receivers. We saw it from Chris Hogan uh, a couple years ago when you just kept sticking with him because he's out there and he's running more routes than anyone. He's always out there. Philip Dorsett has – the last couple of years has always been out there. I think, Mike, I think you should make a John Ross versus Josh Gordon water bet since Jason just mm. set it out there. I, I'd i be all over that. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I think my rankings do slightly favor Josh Gordon, but I'm willing to take the – I'll take uh. the bet. Why not? Water bet. It's rare I can set a water bet between you two on it. That's a good one. On a two, it's fair. So. All right, the Lions at 1-0-1 one, oh one, take on the Eagles. The Eagles uh, in Philadelphia are six and a half point favorites. Now, Mike, I know we've got like a little pick 'em game we do around the office. I know you said you're taking the Lions in I this am. game. I certainly, I, I don't think I'm taking the Lions, but I don't like the line. Six and a half seems like a lot for an Eagles team that is pretty banged up, have had very uneven performances on both sides of the ball. You know, they've had moments where I said, wow, this is the team we expected to see. Carson Wentz looks great. And then we've had moments where they've looked a little disheveled and, and players now banged up. No Deshaun Jackson. No Alshon. Je well, Alshon and DJX are technically not marked as out. Well, I think DJX is already rocking the doubtful. Yes. So it's very unlikely to see Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson. Alshon is still maybe. and But we're expecting probably to see neither one. And so that makes Nelson Aguilar a flex play at the yes. wide receiver position. Yes. And then Jordan Howard, people want to know, do you drop Jordan Howard right now? And, you know, is this the week Miles Sanders begins to assert himself for fantasy purposes? Because he hasn't thus far. No games with more than three yards of carry. He hasn't scored. He's had problems. He, similar to Joe Mixon, though, that he's had some big plays called back. I'm, my confidence level with, with Miles playing him this week, it's, it's certainly not very high. It's a, more of a desperation running back play. I don't want to roster Jordan Howard. <laughs> and I don't want to roster Royce Freeman, but how do you cut these guys? Would there? I would. Ro I'd, I'm fine rostering. It's like Royce. a one or two click process, depending on platform. It's the, just the difference. Let them go, man. The difference between the two is Royce Freeman is seeing some passing down work and succeeding w with the opportunities okay. he's given. Yeah, you're you're far more optimistic about Royce than I am because I don't see a world where, okay, so one time in two years, Royce Freeman's looked better than Philip Lindsay. I don't see a world where he, he has to establish himself to the degree of some massive workload. It's I'm only not, injury. It's only injury that's going to make one of those two I guys I agree in the with that. They're, otherwise, they're not fun to roster. What I'm talking about right now is just the Royce Freeman head-to-head -head against Jordan Howard. And, yeah, you are correct that it, we haven't seen Freeman look better than Philip Lindsay very often, but Royce Freeman was hurt all last year. So Wouldn't you like to – I mean, genuinely, you're, you're kind of a dangerous guy. Yes, I and woke so up feeling dangerous. Royce Freeman, Jordan Howard, or, I would play or Darwin Thompson. That's who, the question who would you I was rather just going to bring put up. Put on your roster. Uh, who would I roster? Yeah, because you know. Would you drop Royce Freeman to pick up a Darwin Thompson for the upside to ride the snake, Mike? Mm. Who, who probably? Wow. Is, that literally, wow. literally, uh, on this episode, I don't I, know if I could. I went to look at doing that. But unfortunately, Andy who's, got, who's got Darwin? Darwin Thompson. Yeah, I paid zero fab for him. How does that feel? It feels pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, you know, that's tough, right? I mean, very tough. I would easily drop Jordan Howard for yes, that one's easily easy. for Darwin for Agreed. the upside potential. But what would you do with Royce? Asking for a friend. I would, you know, I'd probably. I'm holding him. I'd probably hold him because I know that at least with him, I know I've got guaranteed carries week to week in an emergency situation. I don't at running back ever want to be someone that watches football and roots for injuries. I don't want to be that person, which is why I have to drop Royce Freeman. <laughs> it's solid. Because he's a solid point. Carry on my way, All right, here we go. 18 opportunities in week one for carry on. 15 in week two. Did much more with them in week two. Could he get to 20 this week, Jason? Yeah, he, he certainly could get to 20. Um, I think will, it, will he get to 20 this week, Jason? I don't think he gets to 20 this week. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to start, start posting uh, the, the will he's versus the could he's. But uh, I'm expecting – I, I want to see what happens. They're one of the four teams in football that have not had one goal line opportunity at all. So we haven't got to see Detroit down there. You want, you want to know a fun fact? The Saints haven't had one. Yeah. So they, they haven't had a single opportunity there. And, and they might not for a couple more weeks. <laughs> you have to think that – the probability that Carrion Johnson is, in fact, the goal line running back. The, the, 
that probability has gone up with C.J. Anderson being told to hit the bricks. The, the tilt level for my good friend Jason, like for Jason's health, please. If they got to the if goal they line, get to the goal line to and Ty Johnson. Johnson is on the goal line, like Jason or he, Smash Jackson somehow, his, I, we will be able to see Jason's soul leave his body. And for the health of my good friend Matt, hey, Patricia, Dementor will fly in, I, suck it out of him, and he will lay there. I can promise you, for looking like, like Matt Patricia. Oh man! If you've seen our studio tour, we've got this nine TV wall where we can take in all the games at once. While we're sitting there together, if that happens, if if Ty Johnson gets that goal line carry, I recommend you to cover. As much as your face, because the TVs are about to explode. Just literally, they're going to, from my rage, will explode You'll and shards carry. of glass will go everywhere. We'll dive behind the couches. Kenny G, you're starting him. Yes. 100%. Anybody great... outside of Kenny G, though, this week on the you know wide receiver side for the D Detroit Lions? No. Uh, nope. Marvin Jones is not getting the volume I'd hoped for. Zach Ertz is out there. Yep. He's a must start. Now, TJ Hawkinson, I think we've established, we've received all the feedback, the input, the data necessary, all the possible nicknames for TJ Hawkinson. And what we've actually come up with is, look, we have a two-game sample for TJ. We have one game in which oh, he was... Hockey-lees. Hockey-lees. <laughs> hockey one game in which he was hockey-lees. Yeah. But unfortunately, last week we had one game... Sweaty. Not One for seven. Used... Not a good start. No. Toss him away like a hawk strap. <laughs> All right? So if he put, Like a Gardner Minshew hawk strap. So if he puts up a big game, we've established he's hockey leaves. <laughs> if he, if he uh, lays an egg, unfortunately, he has to bear the name hawk strap for the week. So it's the first player with two nicknames. Don't blame us, TJ Hawkinson. It's not our fault. No, the Foot Clan, they came out in droves. We just couldn't choose. So have a good game. Be hockey leaves. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Now, would you start him in this game? It's not the greatest matchup. Uh, the the Eagles have been middle of the road th through the first two weeks. Last year, they were the top, they were top three against tight end. But I do think that they're the Lions are going to need to throw the ball. So I think he is someone you could start this week. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's on the cusp of the tight ends, tight end eleven by consensus. Let's get into the starts. Starts of the week. All right. Quarterback position. Jason, who's your start of the week? Look, I'm sticking with who I went with last week. If you picked him up, you've been playing him. Tom Brady is going to be a top five quarterback, uh, I think, for the foreseeable future. He's got every weapon at his disposal. It's not one of those games where just because they are going to win and they're at home, it's all going to the running back. I think he starts with, you know, again, three touchdowns for Brady. I'm going to go with Josh Allen against Cincinnati in that game. 17 rush attempts for Allen through two games. So it's looked really good. He's got John Brown. He's got some weapons. Beasley's looked great. So I'm going Josh Allen, who is perennially undervalued. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, we'll go. Oh, that's excellent. We haven't brought Josh Stallion up in a while. So I think it's a Stallion week. And the quarterback who has, the way we do things, he's basically just never been eligible for this, but I'm going with the vote of confidence. The start of the week of Aaron Rodgers at home taking on the Denver Broncos. The Broncos fantasy points against are absolutely inflated by a one Mitchell Trubisky and a Derek Carr. I'm not buying into the the Denver defense. I think Aaron Rodgers has his first quarterback one game of the season. All right, at the running back position, Jason, who's your running back start of the week? So, just like last week, I'm going lower. This isn't a must start, but this is a very uh, capable starter. If you need him, Frank Gore is my start of the week. I'm starting him. Exactly. I, I think you could start him over over plenty of players out there. I would there. think starting him would be good for the start of the week. Well, I would just, say starting him is solid. Yes, but I'm saying I'm not – I'm not saying he's going to be a top 10 back, but I am saying there's no way he's not a top 20 back. He's going to get so much volume. They're at home. They're favored by a touchdown. Scoring there's, opportunities. The scoring opportunities are going to be his. Devin Singletary is most likely out. If he's not out, he'll be limited. Frank Gore should feast in this game. I'm going with Marlon Mack. I'm, I'm taking the wow. chance on Marlon Mack. He's my start of the week. 
He's third in the league in rushing. Dancing with the devil. Jacoby Brissett is 29th in the league in passing yards. I'm not dancing with the devil. There's a lot of optimism around it. Yesterday, when he, you know, you have one of their beat reporters talking about he was walking into the locker room joking around. He was holding a walking boot, joking with the reporter about it. He thinks he's fine. I think we see him out there. And if he's out there, the matchup, the performance, and what they're doing on the ground right now, I'm going to give you the, the shot of confidence. An active Marlon Mack should be in your lineup. All right, and I'm going with uh, what Jason was doing with a lower-tier running back who you actually, I think, is a fine start this week. I'm going with Carlos Hyde, our good friends. You heard him at the beginning of the show. Skittles, they taste the rainbow. I'm tasting the volume Oh, this week, fellas, with Carlos Hyde. This, this is the team that Bill O'Brien wants to be. Yes, he has Deshaun Watson, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, a fantasy superstar, but if O'Brien has his way, He's going to run the ball a ton. Carlos Hyde has looked rejuvenated after, like, it's shocking. But Carlos Hyde has looked fantastic. Uh, week one, the Maybe 10, the system just fits him. Maybe. The 10 for 83 week one, 20 carries for 90 yards this past week. And the way you beat the Chargers, on the ground. And that's going to be Carlos Hyde. All right, wide receiver start of the week, Jay. Uh, it's Larry Legend. Yes. Pro Bowl Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, look, he has only been awesome this year 13 targets week one 11 targets week two over 100 yards both weeks a touchdown week one and this is about Larry's home road splits look he was great last week in Baltimore on the road but over the last few years later in his career he gets up for those home games he juices that crowd that crowd it's it's this I mean we've been there Larry is uh, a part of the Valley of the Sun, and when they need a play, they're going to go to him. This is a winnable matchup. I, I think Larry Fitzgerald has an excellent game. All right, I'm actually going to go with Mike Evans, the start of the week like at it. the wide receiver position, heading, uh, you know, taking on New York this week. I think he's just been a play away from giving you what you need. The target share between, you know, Godwin, who's performed, had the touchdowns, and Mike Evans, it's been close. 9-8 last week. Mike Evans, I want to give you the shot in the arm this week. Start of the week. I'm going with the smooth routes of Mr. Kenny G. 19 targets through two games. He has the fourth most air yards. He has – Kenny G looks like he has leveled up as a wide receiver. He's Matt Stafford's go-to guy, and the Philadelphia Eagles can be torched. He definitely seems like he's distanced himself from Marvin Jones. Yeah, he he's has. not 1A, 1B yeah. like we thought it might be. Yep. Yeah. All right, Jason. Revenge game narrative. Let's oh. go. Start of the week at the tight end Start position. Start of the week at the tight end position. He uh, upset all of his owners week one. Vance McDonald came out week two. Had a great game. Two touchdowns. Both from Mason Rudolph. Rudolph's going to look to Vance McDonald. Vance is on the field. He's open. He's going back to San Francisco. He's going to say, hey, oh. George Kittle, <laughs> you wish you were me. <laughs> I was the original guy also, having long can I get your autograph? Yes, yeah. please. Can we ch exchange jerseys after this game? Uh, yeah, no. I respect you immensely. Make it out to my kids. <laughs> so I, I, I do believe that he's a guy you can uh, play this week. You know, you, you've you got two games, one terrible, one great. What's the truth? I think the truth is you're going to be doing the man stance this week. All right, I'm actually going with O.J. Howard. Wow. I, I don't blame you. At first, I, I, you asked the question, and you were like, and we were like, well, you got to be right. I, th I think you're right here. Yeah, I mean, peop look, the people need it. I'm taking a stand. I know our editor, Kyle, appreciates that. And O.J. Howard, after the goose, against New York, there's some motivational tactics involved. He's out there on the field. The targets will come, and you don't have a lot of better options. If you don't have one of the main guys – you, you don't need to go out there and play Eric Ebron over O.J. Howard. I do not believe in that. Play O.J. Howard. Start of the week. Don't care. And I've got Greg Olson. He has the second most tight end air yards. A 20% tight end share. Or Even, with share. Allen. Even with Kyle Allen. Even with Kyle Allen. Okay. Tight end against the Arizona Cardinals is going to be the smash matchup every single week. Okay. Okay. By the way, Devin Singletary not practicing today. He will not play. There's just no way after yeah, that I don't injury. See it. All right, that was Starts of the Week. One more very important analytical right-angle segment. Mm -hmm. 
Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This week, you can forget about old Justin Tucker and play his opponent, the Chiefs' Harrison Butker. Stunning. Incredible. Uh, thank you once again for that, Jason. You're welcome. I will. You're welcome, Foot Clan. I'm thinking about putting kickers back in one of our leagues because of that. Yeah, so, well, I don't blame you. Probably won't, though. I do. Uh, don't do it. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, for today's podcast. Tomorrow we'll have more matchups, by the way, <clears throat> and we'll get into in and out uh, We'll have ballers on a budget and all the latest news, including some Josh Jacobs follow-up information for you. A signed DeAndre Hopkins jersey yesterday, $89.61 on pristineauction.com. And you can get daily steals over there. Head to pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. Save a little quiche. Yeah. That is it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you for supporting this show. You can go to jointhefoot.com if you want to be a part of our listener community. 10,000 strong over there. We'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Reminder, Foot Clan, today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers was brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made. That's no exaggeration. Muggsy's high-tech fabrics are so soft and flexible, they literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor. Head to Muggsy.com to grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for 10 bucks off. That's M-U-G-S-Y.com. The code FOOTBALLERS for 10 bucks off your pair of Muggsy jeans.